So I'm doing this thing down here, this more Dick thing at my university where I've got Dick Coughlin coming down. As amongst a bunch of other people, you know, he's going to do his queer fetus for Jesus, sure. I'm going to do some talking about that a lot. But some people have been asking me, you know, why Dick Coughlin? Is he an appropriate person to come down and speak at a prestigious university? <laughs> no, because he isn't, not at all. And uh, that's kind of what the joy of it is for me, I think, really. You know, people are saying, you know, couldn't you get somebody more worthy, more value for money, more entertaining, more interesting, more famous? Yeah, probably could, actually. Probably could. But uh, I think it's funny. Get Dick down. Because, you know, if whatever else he is, and I'm not saying you shouldn't like him, I quite like him. Whatever else he is, he is amongst his other talents. He has a, has a talent for failure on a monumental scale. You know, he, he is a massive failure, Dick. You know, many people will say he fails as a comedian. I've got a point in that. Many people will say he fails as a as, a, as a, an entertainer of any kind or or fails as a human being, people may, may even say, you know, because he tends to upset people. Uh, maybe he appears a bit needy sometimes. Yeah, some people will say he's a failure on all kinds of grounds, and that's true. But I think he's a failure in YouTube terms. A massive failure in YouTube terms. Because he's, he's a comedian on here. He comes on here as an entertainer, right? And we all know what... Um, and he uses it for his... Um, livelihood, at least to a certain extent, or used to at least. But um, we all know what the uh, the career path looks like on YouTube by now. We know what success looks like, right? We know the arc that you take, and we know where you end up. And nobody, even the most sycophantic admirer of Dick, God knows why anybody would be that, nobody can pretend that Dick has realistically got himself on that path and is following it to its logical conclusion. He ain't going to be smosh, you know what I mean? He's not going to be uh, Ray William Johnson or... Um, I don't even know the names of these people, actually. But you know what I mean? He's not going to do that. He's not even going to be the Amazing Atheist or Thunderfoot or Pat Condell. You'd be lucky if he isn't Brett Keane. But, uh, so he's just not on that career path. He's failed miserably at it. And there's no real excuse for that, to be honest, because it's not difficult. And YouTube provides lots of tools for how to get yourself on that career path. And if you look at the the guidance for how to make videos and how to be a YouTuber in those in YouTube terms, it's really clear to lay out what what you have to do, you know. So he's got no excuse for not following it. Because, you know, there are those five basic rules, aren't there, which people know by now, I'd imagine, to do with uh, fame on YouTube. And success, really. Success, better word than fame, isn't it? Let's see if I can remember them offhand. I might have to consult when I get back. But you'll probably know them anyway. So anyway, yeah, yeah. rule one is, you know, don't talk to anybody who's got fewer subscribers than you have. You'll know that one, I'm sure. Whenever you watch um, videos by, uh, what's it called, Ray William Johnson or any of those people I mentioned before, they, they have conversations. You know, Mr. Repsion talks to Britney's official. There's conversations which happen, but they always happen to people, with between people, who are roughly at the same stage of the career path. That's, it's just like, you know, like the Premier League, you know, you don't, if you're in the Premier League, you don't play anybody in the Northern Conference. So it's that kind of a thing, really. And uh, it's, it's not hard. You just, just stop talking to people who've got fewer subscribers than yourself. For some reason, Richard Dick Coughlin doesn't do that. He keeps insisting on talking to the fucking plebs. So I don't know, that's just stupid. Anyhow, the second uh, rule, of course, oops, bramble, which, uh, which he seems incapable of following, is that uh, you kind of have to refer to your subscribers as fans. Now that's really easy. And it says, uh, it says as much, really, in the YouTube guidelines for partners. And, and YouTube even provides the tools for doing that, you know? Connect with your top fans, it says, you know, when you do your subscription thing. How hard is that? Oops, hello, dog. <laughs> Potential dog fight left. Come on. <laughs> See if he's taking care of us, oh, he's all right. Anyway, what was that? He's here, it's all right. Hello, pup. Go on, go on. <laughs> oh, yeah. In, in, come on, in. Anyway, where was it after that dog fight? Oh, yeah. Um, connect with your top fans, yeah? So, um, but he doesn't do it, you know? He just doesn't call people fans. It's, it's not that hard. I think all the drugs he took must have given him kind of mental 
problems. He's got memory loss, probably. He can't remember that we're supposed to be fans. Fuck's sake. So, yeah, he doesn't obey that rule. For some reason, he keeps talking about people as if they're his mates or something. Uh, okay, so what have I gone through so far? Don't talk to people with lower subscriber counts than yourself. Always refer to your subscribers as fans. Uh, what's the third one? Oh, yeah, restrict access. Yeah, you've got to restrict access to yourself. Now, that's part of the generation of a fan culture, you know this, yeah? That uh, if you want to generate a powerful fan culture, you've got to develop a sense in people that you, the object of their attention, are valuable, and you do that best by making yourself scarce, right? That's why at, uh, if you go to VidCon, one of those conferences, there's VIP rooms where the, uh, the great and good of YouTube, those people that the multi-channel networks or whatever the organisations want to promote, turn into, you know, build fan cultures around. That's why they stick them in VIP rooms, so they've got limited access. Or they put them in signing sessions, but they're under the line, you only get 15 seconds with your, with Alex Day or whatever. Well, not Alex Day now, of course, not since, you know, that thing. But anyway, that's, so yeah, rarity. You've got to make yourself rare. And Richard's hopeless at making himself rare. He's all over the place, you know, he's tweeting left, right and centre, talking to people. You know, it's hard to get away from him sometimes. So again, he's, that's the break in the cardinal rule, really. So that's three. What was the fourth? There's five, I can't remember them all now. Shit, I'm, I'm down, written down at home as well. Fourth. Uh, fans. Oh, fuck. Is that three or is it four? Look at this huge puddle, look. Pissing down with rain this morning. Chucking it down. Anyway, um, scarcity. Should have come at me well into the sugar. Didn't. Um, fans. Oh, yeah, don't show any weakness. Of course. How could I forget that one? Don't show any weakness. It's all right, you can show foibles, you know, you can stick a banana up your ass, or you can, um, uh, I don't know, talk about a dubious past, say you've done drugs. You can say, you can say that kind of stuff. But you, you have to have, sh give the impression that you've come through it, right? I mean, that's, again, part of cultivating a healthy fan culture, successful fan culture. You have to give them the impression that you're kind of tough in somehow, a survivor, because you want to activate all those, um, all those processes of by which people are attentive to you, those old visceral responses where we look to survivors and, and kind of value them in some way, probably for survival value ourselves, I suspect. Anyhow, he's terrible at that. You know, he's got plenty of past to draw on, but uh, no, he's always kind of crying and whinging on camera and mm, get some money. So, you know, it's just um, no one respects that, unfortunately. Uh, no fans respect that, I should say. Of course, if he was talking to his mates, it'd be fine. But uh, but no, if, 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 you can't do that with fans because fans lose faith in you at that point and walk away. So if you're trying to maintain a, a, a career path, a trajectory upwards towards YouTube success, you can't show any weakness or respect weakness in others. You can be empathetic, but you can't show, show or um, respect weakness. So that's the fourth one. What was the last one? I did think of it a minute ago, actually. Shit, it's gone again now. Oh, you've got to control the conversation. That's it. You've got to control the conversation. So, you know, of course, successful YouTubers maintain contact with their fans, right? They always ask questions at the end of their videos. Point the doobly-doo. So ask me a question. But uh, they were always in the control of the conversation. They decide which questions to answer, make special videos, control the image very carefully. So the conversation, you have, to, you have to maintain control of the conversation if you're going to be successful in that kind of Zeke Heil way. But um, again, Richard, hopeless at that, hopeless at controlling the conversation. It just gets away from you, you know, he lets other people talk, lets other people um, lead for a while. Just not a successful strategy at all. Anyhow, that's it. This has been a very long video. Bloody hell. Nine minutes. I'm going to see if I can finish in, in one minute from now anyway. So yeah, just for all those reasons, Richard's a big failure. Monumental failure in YouTube terms. So it's just really just sympathy that I'm bringing him down here, nothing else. Because as I say, he doesn't follow the five cardinal rules of YouTube success. Keeps treating people like they're his friends rather than his fans. Keeps letting the conversation go hand up behind it over to other people. 
doesn't make himself scarce, talks to people at all different levels. He's, uh, he's just not doing the YouTube success story thing. I mean, it's almost like he was just like a guy, you know what I mean? Who just lives in this little community down here. That's where I live down here in this village. It's almost like he's just a guy in the road, you know what I mean? You just say hello to. And, uh, and that will never do, will it? That will never do. So yeah, anyway, anyway get, um, I'll put the link to the Kickstarter campaign again. Uh, I do hope you support it, just because I'd like to get him down here, just so I can tell him to his face. And we can all tell him to his face, you know, what we really think of him, really. And that kind of behaviour, which doesn't show proper respect to careers and success and YouTube and fan, fan culture. You know, I think we should just tell him to his face what we think about that, really. Because it's not right, is it? Thank you.